Hello and welcome to our channel. My name is Joe and Di is behind the camera. Today what we're going to talk about in this video is some common mistakes that people make when they first start an allotment or a kitchen garden. Um, we're going to give you our 10 top tips to help you along the way. Hopefully minimise some of the mistakes you make, which we've probably made all of them in the past some, at some time. Um, hopefully these tips will help you and if they do please consider subscribing to our channel and um, use the subscribe button at the below. Thank you. So tip number one um, is look after yourself basically. I mean when you start doing gardening, it's like any other activity, you have to be careful not to injure yourself. Um, so I'd say take it steadily and slowly to start with because digging can give you back problems. I had them in the past myself. Um, so I'd, I'd say take it slowly and steadily and wear protective equipment when you're doing stuff, gloves in your hands or wear some goggles when you're strimming. So tip number two I would say is plan, plan and plan really. Um, when you take on a new area, find out where the sun comes up, find out where the shade is in, on, on your plot or your garden. Um, think about things like uh, putting in paths which will help you access the site during the winter when it's muddy. Think about can I collect rainwater which is good for your plants. Um, think about where do I want to put perennials such as raspberries or strawberries. So plan all these things into your allotment when you start or your kitchen garden and it will pay back benefits and help you um, get established a lot quicker. So tip number three, I would say start small. When you take on a large area, like a garden or allotment, it can be a bit daunting to start with. So start with a small area at once, clear it thoroughly, clear small areas thoroughly at a time, so taking out the weeds and digging it over, and then move on to the next area. So in the meantime, you could sort of cover over uh, any large areas with a ground sheet or some cardboard, and that will kill the weeds underneath for you before you move on to that. So tip number four is don't spend too much money to start with. Um, you can do things a lot cheaply if you use uh, recycling sites or you know buy stuff cheaply from shops like uh, eBay. Um, you can start stuff from seeds. You can buy cheaper seeds. Starting from seeds is a lot cheaper than buying things um, like ready, ready established plants. So. Uh, yeah, basically don't spend too much money. It can, it, you can easily go to a garden centre and spend loads of money in one go. So tip number five is grow what you like to eat. It sounds silly but there's no point in growing sort of loads of Brussels plants if you only enjoy having Brussels at Christmas. Um, think about what you eat. I mean there's no point in buying, growing loads of cabbages. How many cabbages can you eat in a month? Um, yeah, I mean I'd, I'd look at your sort of monthly vegetables uh, shopping and try and reflect that in your growing. So try and reflect that in your growing. You can, I mean, it can be tempting to plant a whole packet of seeds in one go. You end up with a whole glut of stuff that you don't know what to do with. So tip number six is don't um, try and sow seeds too, seed too early. Um, yeah, you need to find out for the seeds you want to grow, what is the lowest temperature they can germinate, germinate at. Um, find out the ideal temperature to grow them on and don't make the common mistake of planting them out when it's too cold. Um, find out when your last frost date is in your area. I'll put a link at the bottom for that so you can find out for your, for your own area that you live in. Um, basically, uh, planning is the, is the key to this really. Plan what you want to sow, plan when you want to sow it, and plan when you, it's ready to be planted out. So tip number seven is learn about the weeds that are growing on your site really. Um, different weeds require different solutions so the more you can find out about what's growing on your site it will help you clear those weeds but what I say is clear areas slowly and effectively and that will save you a lot of time in the long run. So tip number eight is understand your soil. Um, different plants grow better under different sort of soil conditions so the more, the more you know about your own soil the better. Um, find out about it, watch videos, get a book from the library. There are sort of lots of information out there. Um, and you can build up your soil's nu nutritional value as well by sort of adding mulch, compost. So continue to add stuff to your soil will improve it, its fertility, it'll improve its water retention, all sorts of ways. It, it takes years sometimes, not weeks, but you'll see a gradual improvement the more you do and your plants will benefit, you, you, you get, you'll get more yield from your plants and you'll get more productivity. So look after your soil and 
you know, everything else takes care of itself basically. Um, find out about crop rotation as well, that's another way of um, ensuring you don't grow the same things in the same, same place all the time. That helps your, your soil's um, fertility, reduces diseases in your soil and helps your plants grow better. So the more you find out, the better. So tip number nine is about perennials. Think about the, the, the things that you like, like raspberries or strawberries or rhubarb, things that stay, stay in the same position for years. Um, think about what you like, get them established in, 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 on your allotment or kitchen garden early and you'll be producing uh, crops from those for years to come. Or even fruit trees, if you're going to put a fruit tree in, the earlier you can put that in the better, you'll start getting crops from it a lot sooner. Right, tip number 10 is successional sowing. It's very sort of easy to get a packet of seeds and think, I'll just plant those all in one go. But um, you'll get a whole crop in one go. And, I mean, how many lettuces can you eat in one week or cucumbers or anything else, for example. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is to plan your growing. Think about how long things take to grow, plant on and then harvest. You can work out how long that takes. And then you can work out a successional timetable to grow lettuces for the whole year, basically. There are varieties. If you plant lettuces every three to four weeks, so so lettuces every three to four weeks, there's no reason why you can't have lettuces for a whole 12 month period. Um, yeah, so you need to plan that though. You need to plan how long do they take, take to germinate. Now I've got to grow them on slightly, then plant them out and harvest them. But if you do your own calendar, make, I mean, this is a probably top tip that we've found over the years, make your own calendar of the things you like growing. If you, grow, you, you um, plan your successional growing over the over, over the period where they grow and then you'll get a harvest for a lot much longer period than you will if you just plant the whole lot in one go and get one crop in one go so yeah I mean it's successional sowing is the way to, to make sure you've got a nice stream of vegetables fresh all the time while that uh, particular crop is in harvest time well, hopefully those 10 tips will help you along your way um, Everybody makes mistakes, don't worry about making mistakes. We're still making mistakes, but every mistake is a learning opportunity. So um, yeah, hopefully those, those 10 tips will help you along your way. If you've enjoyed the video, please um, consider subscribing. Please leave us a like or share the video with friends or family. And um, hopefully you'll enjoy your gardening experience and uh, come back and watch us again sometime. Thank you for watching.